land is your land, and this land is my land. From the California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for you and me. Our national parks play a huge role in what we think about when we think of America. From Acadia and the National Mall in the east to Yellowstone and Yosemite and Glacier in the west, they hold a special place for millions of Americans. They connect us with our history and the natural world. They restore us, they inspire us, and they recharge us at a deep level. President Woodrow Wilson created the National Park Service in 1916 to protect and regulate all federal parks and monuments. Under the Department of the Interior, the Park Service was charged with the conservation of scenery, wildlife, and natural and historic objects, and to provide for the enjoyment of the same in such manner and by such means as will leave them unimpaired for the enjoyment of future generations. Active national parks offer a counterbalance to our overly commodified landscape and cultural obsessions with development and progress. They stand as islands of calm and refuge in the sea of manic anthropocentric productivity. Our national parks are part of what truly sets America apart from the rest of the world. The National Parks and Public Land Legacy Restoration Fund that was created as part of the Great America Outdoors Act is a bipartisan down payment on infrastructure. We now need to ensure that it's being implemented efficiently. National parks are part of the difficult shameful and genocidal history of the United States. Designating an area as a national park means displacing people who were there before, often indigenous tribes who have occupied and revered those lands for centuries. What you need to do is add, you never subtract. Mm -hmm. And this is where we were, and this is where we are now, and we have evolved. Over many of uh, the national park units in the United States play an important educational role in telling a more robust story of the country that includes not only the nation's great achievements, but also its more shameful episodes, such as slavery, massacres of Native Americans, the internment of U.S. citizens Japanese descent during World War II, as well as the history of racial apartheid and brutality in the United States during the Jim Crow era and the Civil Rights Movement. We visited Rodney Cook's Millennium Gate Museum to discuss the importance of conserving American parkland. My name is Rodney Mims Cook, Jr. I am appointed by the President of the United States as one of seven commissioners of fine arts. American parkland is among the most beautiful in the world, and it was a great vision of Theodore Roosevelt. He had the vision with being the outdoorsman that he was, to preserve all this property that he was seeing as, as much as he was so well-traveled. It hadn't been done before. It was typically royal parks in Europe and Asia, but not a, a, a president and a federal government going out and purchasing land for the pr protection of the property itself, much less intentionally for the enjoyment of the American people. As national parks contain an abundance of natural resources, such as hydraulic power, minerals, land, timber, and thermal waters, many industries are interested in owning them for profit. The National Park Service must continue to protect and regulate our federal parks and monuments so they can be preserved for future America. Imagine the United States without the national parks. Yosemite Valley could just as easily have become a gated community with a private golf course in the center. The rim of the Grand Canyon could be lined with trophy homes, each one with a keep out sign, preventing you from gazing down into that awesome chasm and feeling connected to the eons of time. The Everglades with its abundantly diverse wildlife could have been drained and made into shopping centers. Fortunately, Beginning in 1872 with the establishment of Yellowstone as the world's first national park, your predecessors and previous Congresses pointed the arc of history in a different direction. I think the government is doing the best that they can, but I also think they do increase national park land. We're sitting on top of a triumphal arch in downtown Atlanta, Georgia. And so I imagine this camera is seeing these buildings behind me and just uh, 
a half mile away is the Martin Luther King National Historic Park. It's typically a historic seashore or battlefields or sort of that, those sorts of things, but uh, Dr. King's home and church and burial place is a national park. National parks not only celebrate the beauty found in America, but act as placeholders to remember our history. At the heart of the national park idea is the notion that every American is a part owner of some of the best seafront property in the nation. They own magnificent waterfalls and stunning views of majestic mountains and gorgeous canyons. They have a stake in making sure that, as Theodore Roosevelt also said, these places are preserved for their children and their children's children forever with their majestic beauty all unmarred. This land is your land, this land is my land, and we must protect our lands together.